Rev up your engines! Today I'm going to show you how you can make your tools last forever. Heck, I've been working on cars the last 51 years. i got a garage full of tools and more in the house. And I've learned something over those 51 years, and that is you spend your hard-earned money on tools, you don't want them to break down prematurely. And if you notice with my tools, you see a lot of them are hanging up in the air or they're sitting on boxes stacked up in the air. There's a reason for that. Because the number one destroyer of tools is rust and corrosion. Take a look at this ratchet. This is a Sears ratchet. Most of the Sears around here are long gone. They went out of business and they've disappeared. But this tool is still going strong. And you know why? Because it lives here in one of these dishwashing containers that I got at a hardware store. <laughs> But here in Hot Human, Texas, even if you keep your tools out of direct contact with water, hey, it's humid as can be here. You need to stop the tools from corroding, because just sitting in the air, they go bad. Now, I use all kinds of different lubricants, but there's a new one called Anyway by this company Zado. And I've been trying it out, and it seems to work pretty good. It lubricates parts, so it prevents friction especially in a ratchet head. It also displaces moisture. You know, there's a million of these things out here. I'm trying this particular one out just to see how it works. And so far, it seems to do a pretty good job. So on this 30-year-old ratchet, you want to spray the head. Look at all the dirt and corrosion that's coming out. You spray the other side, the hinge here, and all the parts that move. Look at all the dirt and corrosion that comes out. Now, I had been using WD-40, but you can see all this corrosion that's coming off of it. I think I'll stick to this anyway thing for a while and see how it holds up over the years. I mean, I can't complain about the WD-40 because, hey, this thing's 30 years old and that's what I was using on it before. But when I see all the crud that's coming off now, maybe this stuff's better. I'll give it a try. They both claim to do the same exact thing. And if you look closely, you can see some of the coating has come off and this is the bare metal but aha it's not rusting and that's because I take care of it if I left them alone where the plating has come off this would be coated with rust and it isn't <laughs> now if you have air tools there's a different type of lubrication that they need they need to be lubricated internally before you use the tool disconnect the air and put some of this lube right inside and make it go backwards <laughs> reverse it and make it go forward then when you're done for the day Put a little bit more inside and just leave it and store them upside down so the oil stays inside. And I know some guys are going to say, oh, Scotty, you're going overboard doing that every day twice. But I have air tools that are over 35 years old and they still work. Now, most modern air tools like this Earthquake, they don't have any lubrication points in the gears in the top here. But some of the uber expensive or really old ones do. In that case, this is number 105 grease that Ingersoll Rand makes. You pack that grease inside there every once in a while. But most modern ones, ah, they don't have that. You just oil them from the airline. A little bit of maintenance on air tools can go a long way. Now my next tip has to do with electronic tools like the scan tool. These things aren't cheap. This was originally a $250 scan tool and this particular one was around $1,200. Electronics are not that happy living in a human environment. So I don't store such fancy electronic stuff in my unheated, unair conditioned, old fashioned garage. And yes, Scotty learned that the hard way. I used to leave in the garage because the wife doesn't want anything in the house, right? What happened? The electronics all started to get corroded inside over the years. It took a while, but they wouldn't work. I take them apart. There's all kinds of corrosion inside them especially if they were battery operated ones. The batteries would get corroded, then they'd eat up the electronics, and I had to throw numerous electronic tools away just because of that. So here's two tips for that. One, if you don't use an electronic tool much, when you're not using it, take the batteries out. So you're not gonna have any kind of battery corrosion going on. There's always some kind of electricity in those things. And if they just sit there in a humid, hot environment, a lot of times they start to corrode and they can make a mess of electronic tools. Hey, you want your tools to last forever, but you want them to last forever for you, not for someone else who might steal them and use them themselves. That's where security lights come in handy. I've been trying out this Sansi. I try out stuff. Nobody's paying me. This isn't an advertisement by the company. I've had this particular one hooked up 
on my front porch for about a month now. It's really easy to hook up, it's only got three wires, and as you can see, it puts out tons of light when anybody walks near it. So a good security light at night can save your tools. As you can see, it puts out a lot of light. It's an easy thing to set up. You can adjust the sensor anywhere you want. Now, as I said, I've been using this for about a month, so I'm no more in a year. I like testing stuff over time. So if in a year this thing is still working fine, I'd definitely recommend it. If you wonder what this is next to it, this is a Hoot Bug Catcher. Now that thing's been there for three years. It runs continuously. I never turn it off. And you might wonder, what the heck is Scotty talking about a bug chaser for? Well, here's why. A couple decades ago, I got West Nile virus. It knocked me out. There's mosquitoes here, have it? There's so many less bugs on the front porch. I haven't got West Nile virus again. <laughs> I probably have an immunity to that, but every time I open it up and clean it out, there's tons of bugs inside. Okay, you want your tools to last forever. You don't want somebody stealing them and having them use them. And also, you don't want your tools to last forever, but you get conked out because you get some kind of disease from an insect biting you. And I do have to say, three years of continuous use, and the bulb still works. Now, since it's Mechanic Monday, I'm going to be giving away some of this penetrant spray. If you have a chance to win, place a clean, non-offensive comment on the YouTube comments below, and a winner will be chosen randomly by computer to get some of this great penetrating protectant spray. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.